many ways it's harder to articulate the anarchist vision, if you want, as a critique of the state today than it was in the late 19th century. Um, because we're living, I think, in, in a climate in which it's kind of taken for granted that the state is just something that's here to stay. Um, you know, it's been, along, it's been around for so long now that nobody could remember a time when we didn't have states. And we're faced with a kind of landscape in which the only options on the table are various forms of some kind of liberal state. I mean, that is what's presented to us. It's, you know, communism is dead, we're told, and, you know, there are sort of arguments between how much of a welfare state we should still have, how, you know, how powerful a state should be, a big state, small state, but, but those are the only options on the table. And, and because the kind of um, dogmatic and, and very oppressive forms of state hierarchy that people like Bakunin and Kropotkin were, were facing in, in 19th century Europe are, are not actually so, well at least they're not so overtly evident in, in the states as we know them. It's much harder to articulate just what it is that's wrong with the state and what it is that you're trying to resist. Um, and another problem is that, that some people would argue that actually the state is being displaced as a, a locus of political power, certainly political and economic power, by various forms of multinational sort of corporations. And actually it's corporate power which is the real threat, um, not state power. And one of the, the political arenas in which the anarchist movement seems to have flourished has been the anti-globalisation movement, I think, you know, for that reason. Because it does seem to be the, the kind of forms of, you know, corporate power and, and economic interests represented at a global level that are the most the most powerful, the hardest to resist, and the most um, undermining of, of anarchist values. So, so yeah, there's a challenge in, and I think, articulating just what is what is wrong with the current political forms that we have, given the dominant narrative which is constantly telling us that, you know, there is no alternative. Um, there's also the same challenge that anarchists have always faced, which is the misperception surrounding what they're doing. I mean, only a few weeks ago, I was at one of the demonstrations against the rise in tuition fees with you know, university staff and students, and anybody wearing uh, a black scarf, essentially, was hauled out of the crowd and deemed to be an anarchist. Um, and any time there was any sort of violence, most of which just consisted in a few people chucking bottles at, at uh, you know, windows and things, there was always an immediate response in the press that anarchist activists were behind this, the anarchists are threatening to infiltrate the trade union march on the 26th of March, the anarchists are threatening to bring the city to a standstill, all this kind of stuff. So there is still a perception of anarchism as being just about pure, you know, um, gratuitous violence and chaos and it's very hard in the face of that to articulate the, the positive social uh, values that anarchists are actually trying to defend. So yeah, that's a challenge. <laughs>